Don't ever underestimate the impact that you can have on the people around you with the way in which you interact with them, with you know, the way in, you know, a smile, a kind word, um, a moment of gratitude. Good morning. Good morning, Levy. You know, recognizing a character strength, recognizing the good in other people um, is extraordinarily powerful. It has a ripple effect. You impact the, the community around you, and that's a really empowering thing for young people to hear. For us, you know, we want our students to be successful, so we're always looking for the ways in which we can help students achieve that. Part of, I think, a larger cultural shift that Fayetteville Manlius is experiencing as well is an uptick in mental health issues. We're, we're seeing increasing numbers of students dealing with anxiety, depression. When we talk to students, because we, you know, we selected students and we had them talk about the things that they think about in their lives and, and what they worry about, and they talked about you know, the pressure that they put upon themselves to achieve um, and what achievement means to them. They talked about the impact of social media and the pressure that that puts on them and the ways in which it connects them but also disconnects them from their peers. You know, when I was given my administrative internship, I was essentially tasked with character education. You know, we, we've had character education programs and we want to revive our character education program. So we knew that we couldn't impose a, an elementary school model at the high school. At the high school level, Positivity Project needs to be a student-led movement. If it matters to kids, it's going to matter to the adults around them. We're here, we have a small group um, that's coming to Eagle Hill to organize a P2 pep rally assembly for some of the middle schoolers who have not yet been able to experience what the movement is all about and don't really understand the character strengths and the other people matter mindset. So that is why we're here to plan out the assembly that we're going to be holding in January. So I hadn't heard about um, the Positivity Project until last year when I came in as a freshman. And we talked about it in PE and that's when I got that first sort of taste of what it was like. We, you know, last year we went through the 24 character strengths, class by class, Monday and Tuesday we saw every kid in the school, we had a five to ten minute conversation, which some, for me was great because sometimes it led into conversations that lasted the whole period. And as like being a physical educator, you're talking about movement time and activity minutes and things like that, but those conversations for me were by far and away more important than getting kids up and being active for 25 minutes. Because what it did for me is gave, it gained new perspective on the students and the lives that they're living, which is significantly different than when I grew up. The third day of tryouts, Coach Hayes um, brought me over and said, um, you know, you're gonna be part of my team, and so that means you're gonna have to live this mindset of the Positivity Project. And you know, I was like, oh yeah, okay, that sounds, whatever and but like now that I've at, like I'm actually starting to live it it's been like awesome it's been like my whole life has changed just because of this positivity project like like my whole mindset has changed like other people matter put them before yourself and it's been like that for the past four months and you can just see how much our school is changing because of this like Mr. Hayes is always in the gym shooting trick shots and talking to kids and as much as like people are like watching and think he's like joking around, like that by him doing that, that's spreading other people mad at minds. So for me personally, the mindset has really shifted to treat others the way that you want to be treated. And a lot of my life, like I really didn't think like that, and maybe I wasn't putting others first. But ever since like this has been introduced, and I like checked out my character traits and saw the ones at the bottom, like. That honestly just like motivated me to work on them. This year it's more of just an overall, everyone knows about them, everyone's taken the quiz to know their top 24. Last month was gratitude, we, have, we had everyone write up what they're grateful for on the overpass windows and right now it's kindness. So there's like these um, paper light bulbs across the hallway with uh, acts of kindness on them. But I think the great thing about the Positivity Project is 
It's about the other people matter mindset. It's about teaching the character and the vocabulary. And most importantly, it's about making it work for, for your culture and your students. You know, at the high school level, we have a physical education program that sees every student in this school. We have broadcast journalism classes that, that create media and morning shows for all of our kids. Yeah, we, there's a lot of us in here, right? So without kindness, we would all be kind of falling apart, which happens sometimes, doesn't it, if we're being honest? Okay. Trying to model the character strengths for the students and using the vocabulary, you know, it really hasn't necessarily changed what we're doing or how we're doing it, but it's changed how we're talking about it. And so I think kind of P2 gives us that permission to say to them, like, okay, so how did that go? How did you guys work as a team? This is one of my other sketches. I had turned it in for a sketchbook assignment. We have a world-class art department of just genuinely talented artists and amazing educators who bring out the absolute best in every kid, whether creativity is their top strength or, you know, uh, hidden a little bit more. And so the students, with the guidance of our amazing art department and Mrs. Gabriel, um, have created these beautiful designs for each of the character strengths that we're going to be putting around the building and putting them in places where you're kind of mindful of those character strengths really being exhibited. You know, a struggle that I had senior year was, I think, maybe even ego-related. I did not want to say that I was doing community college. I wanted to say that I was going into a big city like Boston or New York, uh, just like a lot of my grade did. You know, I learned so much about myself throughout the year because that personality test, um, all the activities that I was doing uh, taught me that, you know, this is, this is who I am, these are my traits, and I need to go where those traits, you know, bring me. I think when I stop listening to everybody else and seeing every, where everybody else is going and listen to myself, that's when I knew that, you know, community college and staying home for two years would be the best. The Positivity Project allows us to embrace the differences that are that surround the school because obviously no two students are the same and the positivity project is amazing because it encourages those differences it, it doesn't like shun people who are different it welcomes them and makes them feel like that it makes them understand how important they are not feel like that's what the positivity project does I mean this morning um, you might have saw, seen us we were outside just welcoming people with signs and just it was just nice to see them smile as they walk in, but as like a P2 leader, the little things like matter, matter too, like just seeing someone sitting alone, just going up and making a conversation with them, that makes a difference in their life, I think. Just the little things like that, saying hi to someone in the hallway that you don't really know. Like you don't have to know someone to say hi, just to make them feel like they matter. As administration, we want to be able to, you know, kind of quantify everything. So data is really important in education and we're moving towards quantifying that. Qualitatively, there is, <laughs> there's a myriad of evidence. So in my position as assistant principal and somebody who has helped bring Positivity Project to my district, I get the benefit every day of having emails sent to me and letters sent to me and kids stopping by and teachers stopping by to talk about the impact that it's had. The biggest thing I think I use what I learned in the Positivity Project for was more so work related. When I went in for my interview, you know, they ask you um, personal questions like what are your uh, top strengths and none of that implied algebra, none of that applied social studies. You know, you're there to bring something to the table. When you know yourself, you can bring more to the table. You know, there will be days where you feel like you're knocking it out of the park and you're really nailing this whole thing and then there's going to be days where you feel like we're not doing a good enough job and we need to be doing better. And whenever those bad days happen, something always popped up that reminded us that we're making a difference and Positivity Project is having a difference. And I think the day that the yearbooks came out is a great example of that. I mean, I actually, I think, screamed out loud because the yearbook staff decided that they were going to make last year's yearbook edition a Positivity Project edition. And they recognized students and teachers and staff members for character strengths and they had spreads on the Other People Matter movement and all the things that the Positivity Project had done in the school. And it was wonderful because none of us had any idea that students were doing it. It's important when they feel like you care about them, not for being a high school student or being on the basketball team or you know, being part of the music department, but when they, in my opinion, when they feel like you care about them as people, that's when connections are made and that's when it sinks in. I'd like to think that, you know, even if um, 
students aren't, you know, wearing the shield all over the place, that they're still making shifts within their own lives and realizing the importance of, of some of the mindsets. You know, they're putting their phones away when they're with their friends and family and they're, um, you know, being present in the moment. They're realizing how their words and actions affect other people. How do we define okay? Like, how do we define success? And I think this is kind of not, you know, saying that getting into a great school is not successful, but going to a junior college or going you know, out into the workforce, if that's what makes you happy, then that's success too. You want your students to be happy, and what does that mean? What are the things that we can really give them that are gonna help them be happy and successful in life? You know, achievement is great, but if it comes at the expense of a student's social and emotional well-being, then we need to reevaluate our priorities. We are expanding our definition of success. We want our students to be happy and not just do good in life, but do good in life. And we know that that is going to make them successful.